Okay, let's talk about section 3.8. Um, like, let me summarize like what is learned in section 3.7. Uh, we talked about, we are talking about five relation model. And in section 3.7, we derive um, the differential equation for vibration model. And we, we took care of the, uh, like, you know, the without, uh, uh, without damping, which is undamped free vibration model. Uh, we talked about with damping as well, okay? Which is like a damped free vibration model, okay? But like, you know, so far, I mean like in section 3.7, there was no external force, which means there is no right-hand side. Your right-hand side was zero, okay? But in section 3.8, we will add and we will make a little bit more complicated case, okay? So look at that. This is, um, mathematical model for the vibration motion. So M is the mass and B is the damping coefficient and K is the spring constant, okay? All those M, B, Ks are uh, like positive constant, okay? And now we're gonna add the right-hand side, which is external force, okay? But like for this, uh, for this study, that we're gonna restrict the, like your uh, like external force term as the period of the external force, okay? So like for that purpose, we're going to give your uh, capital FT as F0 cosine gamma T. As you know, like this one, F0 is the like amplitude of your external force and gamma is the frequency, okay? And we assume like, you know, both of like an you know, F0 and gamma is positive, okay? Then we can have this guy, okay? M Y double prime plus B Y prime plus K Y is equal to F zero cosine gamma T. Well, in the pre previous chapter, we use U instead of Y, but it doesn't matter, okay? Okay, here we go. Then, okay, look at that. If you do not have your right-hand side, which means homogeneous equation, then we know um, we can solve the like differential equation, second order, linear differential equation with a characteristic equation. That's what it did in uh, section 3.7. But what about this guy? Like for this case, as you remember, like in uh, section 3.1 through five, uh, there are two parts of the solution. Okay, first one is homogeneous. I mean, like the solution for the corresponding homogeneous equation. And we have to find the particular solution. I'm talking about this capital Y, okay? So here we go. So let's start from like, you know, corresponding homogeneous equation. We are familiar with this one. This can be found by the characteristic equation. And let me try to explain why, okay? Basically, um, when you solve the corresponding homogeneous equation, um, it is um, m r squared plus b r plus k r equals zero, okay? Then like definitely we're gonna use the uh, quadratic formula. Then your r is equal to, um, minus b plus and minus square root of b square minus four mk over two m right so look at that like you know like i explained this one before um this value r is always negative because like you know m r m b r or the coefficient m b r's are positive okay then Look at that. If you do not have like minus four mk, it is just simply square root of b square. Then like your numerator will be equal to zero, right? But keep that in mind. Since m and k's are positive, and this negative is like you can subtract like some positive number, which means like under the square root is like less than b square. In other words, your square root part is less than b. Okay, and minus b. Uh, plus like less than b or subtract and both of them is negative that's why we can say your r which is solution of this characteristic equation is always negative okay so in other words your solution will be um e to the rt4 then okay again since this r is negative which means that your exponent part of exponential function is negative then as long as like t is increasing like this part goes to zero Okay, so that's why I like finally corresponding homogeneous equation part will be goes to zero. That's why we can say it is trend, uh, transient solution. Okay, 
which means that it will be gone, okay? So finally, whenever your T is increasing, the part you will have like from the solution is like, you know, particular solution part. Does it make sense? Okay, and as you talked about um, like this particular solution in chapter 3.5, um, like since your right hand side is cosine function, your particular solution must be uh, the combination of like sine and cosine function form, which is so we can write a sine gamma t plus b cosine gamma t, or we like you normally use like cosine first, but like it doesn't matter, okay? So we can say that is the like a steady state solution, which means like you know when t is increasing, this part will this part will be survived, okay? So like let's talk about the detail of this, okay? Like you know, do you remember like what we did like in uh, undetermined coefficient? Um, method okay like you know, whenever you set up your uh, particular solution uh, we find y prime and y double prime and we plug it back into the differential equation then you can get this a and b okay so well like and if i just like, skip like this way then you are not going to understand you can understand it okay so let me talk about the detail of like this um this equation number eight okay here we go let's talk about this in the next page so, okay. we, uh, we find the form of the particular solution is like this way, right? A equal to A, well, I mean, Y is equal to A sine gamma T plus B cosine gamma T. As I explained, we're gonna find y prime and y double prime, and we're gonna plug it back into the differential equation, okay? y prime is equal to uh, gamma a cosine gamma t and minus gamma b sine gamma t, okay? What about y double prime, okay? And again, minus gamma square, because like all these are coefficient okay and a sine gamma t minus gamma square b cosine gamma t okay once you have like y prime and y double prime we're gonna plug it back into the differential which means uh my um, m y double prime plus b y prime plus k y is equal to um, f zero cosine gamma t will be like this form. It will be a little bit complicated, but you can do okay. m times y double prime, which is minus gamma square a sine gamma t minus gamma square b cosine gamma t plus b gamma a cosine gamma t minus gamma b sine gamma t we just did like first one okay and then okay, let me make a bigger parenthesis and plus b times y prime, which is gamma a cosine gamma t minus gamma b sine gamma t, okay? And third part, I hope I do not make any mistake for this one because this is online. I cannot communicate with you guys, which means even you find my mistake, but there's no way to fix it because I'm just recording my work right now. Sorry about that. Is equal to your right hand side, which is um, F zero times cosine gamma t. So this part is just like duplicated, right? I did like two times, okay? Sine gamma t minus M gamma square A and minus b gamma b plus k. Okay, that is what I wanted, okay? And then the second part, I'm talking about cosine function part. 
Okay, let me get everything, okay? And this will be written by cosine gamma t and we have minus n gamma square b plus b gamma a plus k b then that is equal to f0 cosine gamma t okay look at this one as i told you before that what we're going to do is we're going to just try to compare your left hand side and right hand side okay look at that on your right hand side there's no sine function which means your um like left hand side must like in uh this part must be equal to zero okay and then what about this guy this part must be equal to f zero is okay then we can set up the system here we go then we're gonna have like beautiful system. Okay, first one minus m gamma square a minus b gamma b plus k a must be equal to zero. And the second part minus m gamma square b plus b gamma a plus k b must be equal to f zero. Okay, now we are here. Okay, again. The purpose of this whole crazy process is to finding um, coefficient a and b in terms of gamma n or the other constant which is given okay so now what i'm going to do is like let me see for a little bit okay and we're going to get all the a's from the first equation so which means um k minus m gamma square a uh, minus b gamma b equals zero from first one the second one just like simply b gamma a and what about b part k minus m gamma square b must be equal to f zero okay there's still as you know like there's two ways to solve this problem like first one is the uh, like you know elimination things okay and or we can do um um substitution right for this case let me show you how we can do elimination okay so like, let me try to uh, cancel out B. I'm going to multiply K minus M gamma square for the first one. The second one, we can multiply B gamma, okay? Then you're going to have like this point. K minus M gamma square square, A minus B gamma, and K minus M gamma square B equals zero. The second one will be B square gamma square a plus b gamma times k minus m gamma square b equal to um, b gamma f0. Now look at that. This guy and this guy. They go to each other, right? Then we can simply add up, then they will be gone, okay? Then this will be uh, like this form. Mm. k minus m gamma square square plus b square gamma square of a must be equal to b gamma uh, gamma and f0 okay then now when you divide by the coefficient of a your a is equal to b gamma b gamma f0 over um, k minus m gamma square square plus b square gamma square right and when you plug it back into the like first or second equation of the system doesn't matter okay then you're going to get like a b as like this way b is f0 and k minus m gamma square over k minus m gamma square square plus b square gamma square okay that's a really crazy process okay but again okay don't be depressed okay as i told you i'm not going to ask you to derive like hold this crazy process okay but like try to understand what you're doing okay so now we have like a and b okay let me come back to the problem okay let me come back to the, the model okay and we just found a and b what is a and b again okay, let me come back 
I'm talking about this particular search, okay? I'm talking about the coefficient of like this particular search, okay? But okay, let me talk about a little bit more about this. So do you remember whenever you have like this like a combination form of sine and cosine, we would love to write as one single cosine function to talk about amplitude and frequency and phase. That's what it did like in the previous chapter, right? So like we're gonna do the same thing, okay? There we go. From that one, and I'm talking about this guy, okay? Your um, A cosine sine gamma t plus B cosine gamma t form can be written by R cosine gamma t uh, minus delta, right? The way your r is equal to square root of b square plus b square and your tangent delta is b over a, right? Okay, that's what it learned like in section 3.7. Okay, oh, I say that right already, but you know, anyway, with this calculation, you can find y, okay? Are you okay so far? Okay, that's crazy, right? I know. But like from this one, okay, uh, look at that. Basically, this is periodic, right? Uh, like this one has the same frequency uh, gamma with the uh, like you know external force term, right? I'm talking about this gamma, okay? But the amplitude is different, right? Like in the like external force form, like your external force was f zero times cosine, right? Cosine gamma t, right? Which means your amplitude was f of zero, f zero, right? But when you look at this one, this particular solution has like different like amplitude with a uh, um, like in external term, right? But it really makes sense, right? Because like you know, with external force, then your vibration motion is changing, but like cannot be exactly the same with your external force, right? That's why it is different, okay? So, like, what we're gonna do is we can just try to compare your external force amount and your particular source, okay? Just compare this one with your external force, okay? What is the difference? That's exactly your denominator part, okay? I'm talking about. This guy. Okay? Which is the denominator of your uh, your particular solution, right? We're gonna say that is the frequency gain or gain factor. Okay, since the video is too long, let, let me stop here. Then we're gonna talk about second part. That is okay. Thank you.